great. It's a couple minutes after seven, November 17th, 2016. It's the Deerfield Conservation Commission meeting attended by Ben Byrne, Steve Barrett, Louis Mission, Brian Dana. All right, that being said, we have a not a huge agenda, but we've got a couple of things on here. Um, we're going to start off with uh, Greg Gardner. He has a request for the termination of applicability submitted for the lots 29 and 30 on the corner of Mill Village Road and 5 and 10. Greg, if you'd like to come up and grab a seat and sure. give us a quick description. I will say before Greg even starts, we did do a site visit there today. And uh, pretty much what we're doing is looking at building a uh, self storage uh, facility on this property. Um, uh, we're going to come off of 5 and 10 and uh, put a, about uh, five, five or six buildings in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, four will be climate control buildings. But we're basically here just for determination for wetlands. Um, you guys went out and checked it out, and um, I think we're pretty good. So we did do, as I said, a site visit out there this afternoon. Um, there was no, nothing that, that came off and jumped off the page. There were no uh, comments from DEP about it. Um, as a preliminary step, this is Greg just wanting to make sure that uh, there's no additional hoops that he has to go through. Um, that being said, I would, first of all, put my glasses on. Um, I would suggest that uh, we give a negative determination which is uh, negative one, the area described in the request is not an area subject to protection under the act or the buffer zone. So I would put that out in front of you guys and see what you think about that. I have no reservations. Okay, I make a motion yeah. that we go with the num a negative number one. Second it. Aye. 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 So. We shall sign this. Now, before you go, Greg, I have one little housekeeping thing I do want to do, which we have neglected to do in the past, and it has come back to occasionally cause us grief in the applicant perhaps even. So I just want to make sure that after Louie and signs, Mr. Danak signs. <clears throat> Thank you. I just want to make sure that we're all aware that there is an appeal process that is comes in that the applicant owner any person aggrieved by this determination any owner of land abutting the land upon which the proposed work is to be done or any 10 residents of the city or town in which such land is located are hereby notified of their right to request the appropriate department of environmental protection regional office superseding determination of applicability Basically what it is is that if somebody doesn't agree with us, any 10 residents or an abutter can come, go to the DEP and appeal this decision, which then the DEP would come up and take charge of the case. Doesn't happen often, but it has happened in the past, and I want to make sure, because we've had people who've gotten, we've given determinations to where we haven't told them. They started work immediately, and it's like, that's a bullet, bullet you really don't want to be dodging. Understood. So just, as long as we're on the same page. Yep. Yes. So what we'll do is, it's been signed off, we'll get this off to you. Uh, give it to Priscilla tomorrow and she'll do cool. what Priscilla does. Thank you for professionalism. And thank you. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't pay us enough as volunteers to do this, Greg. You're making the big bucks tonight. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a good night. All right. Take it easy. 
just want to do a couple of quick things before we get going with you guys. Um, Bolton's Pond Road. We did a site visit out there today for the town um, to replace the collapsed culvert so we can balance those two ponds off. Uh, talked to, I tried to talk to Mark Stinson at DEP today to see if there was some a mechanism we could get around filing a notice of intent because the water is so low That's right now. Time, it would be a perfect time <laughs> to do it. So I talked to Kevin this afternoon after our meeting and he has no problem with us putting this off another month. So I'm going to suggest that we continue this meeting to our December, uh, this, this discussion until our December meeting. So that work for everybody? Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. So now, if, if folks would like to come up, Deerfield Academy has submitted a notice of intent for construction of a new hockey rink at their campus. It is a rather extensive project. So if you just identify yourselves for the record. Sure. And then we can proceed with the hearing. Jessica Roberts, Time Bond, Wetland Scientist. Chuck Croce, Time Bond, Professional Engineer. And if you're going to contribute. <coughs> Thank you. All right, just so we know, we do have a, a file number has been issued by the DEP. And Jessica has addressed the issues that they brought up in the notice of intent, as I understand it. So yes. that being said, if you'd like to. Sure. I know we had a site visit today. Can you all hear me? In the... um, we can hear you. Chris, can you hear? Probably take one of the microphones, just kind of point it at you at the end of the table. Good, right? You can hear me? Yeah, sure. yeah. We can hear you. All right. <laughs> uh, at the site visit, we talked about this figure here, so I thought I'd pass it around just to, again so we can go over the existing conditions. Take one down, pass it around. <laughs> so, Ty and Bond submitted a notice of intent on behalf of Deerfield Academy for the new field house and hockey rink. Back in December 2015, you all issued an order of conditions for phase one, which was the enabling infrastructure portion of the project. That work has been completed, and this NOI is for phase two for the building. Um, we submitted a notice of intent because there are jurisdictional wetland resource areas. We have bordering land subject to flooding and a bordering vegetated wetland. We are not working in BBW. We're working only within the buffer zone of the BBW. Um, we've proposed approximately one acre of work in floodplain, and largely that's because of um, the location of Deerfield Academy and that um, southern terrace where the existing field house and hockey rink is located near the athletic fields. Um, so in the notice of intent, we have some figures that show the existing resource areas. We have a bordering vegetated wetland, wetland flags 1A, 1 through 47. We have the 100-foot buffer zone, which on the plans is this purple line. And a floodplain, which is at elevation 142.5 or so, it varies a little bit, uh, which is the blue line here. Um, we also, uh, in the NOI, demonstrate we meet the general performance standards for BLSF. We're proposing compensatory flood storage on the western portion of the project area to account for the amount of fill for the building. We had some net fill for the phase one enabling. We added that net fill, uh, sorry, net cut from the flood storage for phase one, which we requested credit for, folded it into this. So the total that we're requesting credit for includes the, both the phase one and the phase two additional flood storage that's going to be excavated out. Um, and we can go through what that exact number is. Um, but generally, we, we meet the performance standards for BLSF. Um, and the figure that I passed out is just to demonstrate the footprint of the existing hockey rink versus the footprint of um, the new rink, which is the orange line that we talked about at the site visit today. Um, so a portion of that additional work to the south of the existing rink is in floodplain. 
and um, Chuck can tell us a little bit about the proposed work in buffer zone and BLSF. <clears throat> so as Jessica already discussed, we have you know some cutting that's um, below the floodplain elevation to account for the, the filling that we're doing as part of the building the expansion here. There's also a new Zamboni ramp, and that's a gravel drive that heads up to the um, rink floor elevation, which is at 143. And then we also have you know some grading along the, the Zamboni Drive. And there's another sidewalk that comes down out of the back of the hockey rink. And that's also uh, gravel. And then on the other side of the wetland, which goes from the existing gravel parking lot to this, to this uh, gravel um, drive that comes down from the end of Albany Road. This is a uh, fire lane. And then as far as um, soil erosion measures, we have silt fence and hay bale barriers around all of the wetlands. We, have, um, we also have a, a low impact development technique to uh, treat water quality. So if there's any kind of sheet flow before it goes into the, into the wetland. This is a rain garden, which is like a planted area. If you could picture like a landscaped area, it has a, like a soil bed and then some shrubs and perennial plants in it. And that's in this location, so any kind of sheet flow first gets filtered through there, and then and it actually go, we tie into an existing discharge that goes um, to a riprap uh, outlet that's located here. And then we're also relocating some drainage that currently goes right through this area, so the new building kind of cuts off that drainage pipe, so we have to relocate it around. And um, there's also some new drainage down the Zamboni ramp and a new, uh, two new yard drains. And you know, all the yard drains have inlet protection, um, you know, like either a filter fabric wrapper on the grate or a silt sack installed in the, in the yard drain, so there's no, no sediment can get in there. And, um, and then also over here, there's, there's silt fence and hay bale barrier on this entire uh, compensatory cut area as well. So that's a general overview of what's happening down one of the comments that uh, DEP did make was you've completed phase one. Mm -hmm. Have you submitted a certificate? Not yet. We have as built plans, but we have not submitted that. Okay. That's yeah. one of the issues that they did mm -hmm. to make sure that the, we do have that on file. That, that and is that something um, you think we should submit before construction or should be submitted? No, before? I think we're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it basically, it's, it's number two on DEP's yep. request that yep. the previously approved orders that the work is finished and a certificate of compliance has been issued. The commission should be made aware of the status of other permitted activity on the site. So mm -hmm. we'd like to, but, but we have several months. It's not as if we're not, there's not a, a huge time okay. constraint at this point. Okay. So if we could take care of that, that would be one thing. Um, any questions, guys? Uh, I have a question on that, uh, that fire lane. Now that where you're catching the sheet flow, mm -hmm. now why is it stopped there? I, I don't recall, you know, That's what it looked like after that, you know, because you got the road all the way yeah. through the wetland, but you only got part of it. Yep, most of the direction of flow is, is in this fashion, and when we do our calculations, we're required to treat 80% of the total suspended solids, which is um, a, a requirement. So if it rains half an inch, we're, we're required to collect 80% of that half inch. And, and this area, through calculating it through the um, water quality manual, that kind of sets the size of this. So that, that meets the requirement of the water quality manual to treat that 80% TSS. Because that's where you get most of your contaminants is in the first half inch of runoff. And then it, it goes in there and then, you know, so all this together uh, with, that, with that rain garden um, meets the requirement. That's why we kind so of- So you're saying the road is a little higher up at that end then? Yeah, yep. Okay. What's that? The DEP have anything else? Yeah, they've got a couple of comments there. Three actually. Nope. 
Oh, ja. Ja. <laughs> this is more fun before they put it on TV. <laughs> Yep. Being that this is a rather complicated and large project, it has normally been the habit of the CONCOM to send out plans, a notice of intent like this for independent review. Because frankly, it's beyond the scale that volunteer boards are able to really sit there and say, oh yeah, these, these, these calculations look perfect. You know, the regulations have changed so much in the last 25 years that it's become very difficult. So I'm going to ask the board if they would like to send this out for independent review as we've done in the past. I think so. That's a big book to look through. That's a big book to look through when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? Yeah, that's Ben? The pictures are only going to get me so far. So what we'll do is I'm not sure who we'll send it to. We have to find out who can kind of get this done in a more timely fashion because I know you do have a several, you have several months, but several months goes by very quickly. So what we'll do is we'll figure out tomorrow morning when I come down to see Priscilla who's got time, that who we know that's done work for us in the past, who's got time, can get it done in a timely fashion. So you're not sitting there and when you're looking to break ground in March going, we need our stuff. So we'll try and take care of that as in it quickly as possible. So that being said, um, we'll continue this meeting till. Do we want to go with December 22nd or December 15th for our next meeting? Yeah, I would. 15th. Yeah. 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 I think it makes more Sounds sense. Fine. A little too close. So we'll continue this till the December 15th at seven o'clock. Do you think the review will be done by? I can't. Honestly, I'd like to say yes, but it depends. It's it's complex. It's going to take some time. People getting together with Jessica and with, I forget your name already, Chuck. Chuck, and um, so we'll play it by ear. We'll try and get somebody who's got who can get to it immediately. So, but that's not always the case. So we'll so see. Yep, yeah, we'll, they'll get together with uh, Ty and Bond to make sure that. There's good communications between all, all three entities, four counting us. Would so, you all be willing to consider, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, a, I'm thinking in a, in a calendar way, backtracking from their construction start goal of March. And we know there's the 21 day to issue an order of conditions and the 10 day business appeal. So if we build that in, um, a hearing beyond December 15th, would get us a lot closer to that March mm -hmm. uh, construction start. Would you guys be open to setting a special meeting date to yep. provide two We hearings? can work with you on okay. that. Okay. We, want to, we, we don't want to stand in the way of a project like this. It's a huge project, but we need to make sure that we've done our due diligence to make sure that we've done for the town and we've worked for the, make sure that the act is being sure. followed. So, but yes, we will yeah. work with you any way we can. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so we'll see you in, or talk to you in December. Great. I have well. a check for the abutters list too. Can I give that to you all? Um, yeah, I'll put it in the okay. file. Is it made out? It says PH yeah. on the Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't supposed to say that out loud. Right. We're not on. <laughs> all right, so we'll see you in December then. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, next we had, as you all know, I'm sure, the Stillwater Bridge has been shut down for the last few weeks. Um, Kevin came to me back on the 9th and requested an emergency certification, which we 
I granted at that point. And the work should be done what did you, before Thanksgiving, Dave. Talking to Kevin today. Yeah, if everything goes good. So if everything continues so on, we'll. Yeah. yeah. You have a Turkey Day Bridge? We'll have a Turkey Day Bridge. So, so as long as the concrete you know, sets up, I guess, and that's good. I mean, if they can pour it that day they want to pour it. And they fix the gate just now. Yep. Yeah, this for the emergency access to the river. Did they put a yep. gate? Yep. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I was saying that the work happened. They did a nice job. I didn't see that the gate wasn't up last time I went by. All right, we have a, on the, the mail, we have, let's see, request for our fiscal year 18 dues of $275. Make a motion that we ask the town to pay that. Well, second. Aye. 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 I thought we did. Didn't we, just, I thought we, did. we did it before, yes. Okay. And we have a letter from the Connecticut River Watershed Council directed to the Conservation Commission. Um, they're doing some fundraising. If anybody wants to donate. The information is here. Okay. A couple of forest cutting plans. Nothing real dramatic in the mail. That's pretty much the long and the short of the mail. And then we have our minutes to review. Now what about oh before that old what business? About, uh, yeah, old business here. Yeah. We have not received back our. Um, independent review for the Cumberland Farms project down on the corner of uh, Elm Street and 5 and 10. So I did try to contact Greg today, did not hear back from him. So hopefully we'll have something for our December meeting. I will be calling him again tomorrow. We also have here a request to um, pay the postage for the shipment to Greg Newman for the review of the Cumberland Farms project. So I would say for the $9.85, I'll make a motion that we make sure that Priscilla gets reimbursed for that. All second. Aye. 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 Um, we also have in front of us a request for comments for the Cumberland Farms uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Cumberland Farms on <clears throat> 5 and 10 and Elm Street. And at this point, I don't see where any comments that we make would be really germane because we need to finish up our project right. before we can. So at this point, I'm going to suggest that we go with our standard our comment. There's no comment. So, is that gonna... Aye. Yeah. Aye. <clears throat> so put no comment at this time. And then we also have in front of us a request for comment for Grandview Estates. It, we have a, I will actually, did you guys all get this, the copy of this request for comments with the note? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, okay. A request for comments was submitted to the CONCOM by the Planning Board for the above reference Grandview Estates. Um, basically, we went, they came in to see us 12 years ago. With an, yeah, I know. They, um, they submitted a notice of intent. We sent it out for independent review. It came back. Not the uh, notice of intent order of conditions was issued. However, there was never, nothing was ever done, particularly, and there was never a certificate of compliance requested. So basically, I talked to Stinson down at Mass DEP, and we've asked the applicant to file the Form 8 to get this certificate of compliance for what was proposed 12 years ago. So until such a point as we have that request in front of us, there's really no way we can, I've talked to John Waite and advised him on the planning board.
that there's no way we can really give any comment without having it closed out. So again, I would go with the official comment would be no comment at this point. Me? Okay. Do we continue with that at all, or? They're going to have to file the form. We'll just be able wait to, for that. The planning board wants the comments. They okay. want that filled out. So I'm going to guess that uh, they're going to. That'll be down the road. Yeah. yeah. And we do at this point. Minutes from our previous meeting. Yeah, I wasn't here. I was stuck in a tow truck in the middle of a freak snowstorm. Yeah, in the snowstorm, right. that's right. <laughs> I don't know. I made the site visits. I was on, I was on, I, I missed the site visit. If it, if it weren't for the snowstorm, I would have been there, Luke. I flew all the way back from Ireland just to be there. Yeah, hit. You didn't miss anything. Me not being here last month, I cannot confirm minutes, correct? Um, be pretty tough for you to confirm something that you weren't here for, so. Yeah. So we shall making sure studiously ignore you now. <laughs> just making sure I was absolved here. I'm going to make a motion we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Aye. Aye. All right, now looking at our agenda. Any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? There being nothing, and so we'll set a date for our next meeting, which was December 15th at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. With that, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 We're out, Chris.